This morning, so I took a, a quite unusual distribution, a uniform distribution, which had the same chance of getting values right across the range. And I said that if you're looking at a distribution of individual values like this, then we have a number of problems with a distribution like this. The first problem is that we set a cutoff point to cut off 95% in the body of the distribution, 5% in one tail or in the two tails, based on the properties of the normal distribution. We know that 1.65 standard deviations away from the mean will cut off 95% in the body of the distribution, 5% in one tail. But this also always presupposes that your distribution actually does follow the normal distribution. If you have a distribution like this, which is very badly, uh, it's very fat, has a lot of kurtosis in it, then all your assumptions are screwed up. And your cutoff point is basically going to be in the wrong point. So how do we get around this? I also drew up this distribution here. So rather than getting individual values, a thousand individual values and drawing the upper histogram from them, I took averages of 10 values. Got a sample average, a thousand sample averages, and then I drew up a histogram from the sample averages. There are some remarkable properties of this distribution here. The first thing you will notice is that the distribution of sample averages tends towards a bell-shaped curve. The bigger your sample, the better the approximation is going to be. But this is a sample size of 10 from a very unusual distribution. You can see it has a bell-shaped curve superimposed on it, and it's almost a perfect fit. If I'd taken a sample size of 2 and done, drawn up a histogram of 1,000 averages of 2, then you would have found that some of the original distribution, that big, wide, uniform distribution that was very fat in the tails, would actually have come through into the distribution of the sample averages. But provided we take a reasonable sample size, and a sample size of 10 is quite adequate, even for an extreme distribution like this uniform distribution, then we can assume that our distribution of the mean values, of the average values, is going to be more or less normally distributed. What this means is that we can then use the properties of the normal distribution, that is 1.65 standard deviations cuts off 95% in the body of the distribution, 5% in one tail. 1.96 standard deviations cuts off 95% in the body of the distribution, 2.5% in each tail. And we can do that, use that to actually to cut off what well, so-called confidence limits, where we are 95% confident that we have an extreme value. So on this graph here, the red line represents a 95% confidence limit for a one-tail test. So we had a starting hypothesis, which was that we had a drug that we were investigating for its effect on blood pressure, and the starting hypothesis was that the drug reduced blood pressure. So we're only interested in one tail of the graph. So the 95% of the, in the body of the graph actually lies on the high side of this distribution here. The red line represents the cutoff limit, and anything that's to the left of that red line in the tail of the distribution represents an extreme value. So, if we'd taken a sample of 10 and got a value of 110 millimetres of mercury for the average of that sample of 10, based on this distribution of the average values, we would have concluded that that blue line, which represents our sample average of 110, is to the left of the red line, which is our cutoff limit, based on 1.65 standard deviations from this distribution of our sample averages. The blue line is in the tail, it's to the left of the red line there, 
And we would conclude that our drug really does have a significant effect on lowering blood, blood pressure. 